to the door. And then um, uh, I looked at Gurudev, and I, I, he was not looking at me. I s was sitting on the ground, on the floor, and he was heading towards the door. And then I said, uh, I was sitting in the corner, and then I prayed to Gurudev. I said, if, um, if there is some chance in this life that I can become your disciple, please look at me. And then Gurudev just, he was heading to the door, but suddenly he looked at me, he looked at the floor. And then uh, I just uh, rushed to his feet, and I was so happy, and I thought, you know, that, that gives, gave me so much, um, um, so, uh, you know, confidence and uh, confirmation that um, he is my Gurudev because he could um, understand what is in my heart and uh, he answered my prayer. And then, um, and I had a, uh, like a different start that I couldn't uh, uh, accept him this uh, same minute that I saw him. I had this intellectual thing that I need to, uh, you know, understand also what my guru there was saying. So I was so happy that he was the same person and that w uh, we finally had some um, connection. So and uh, Yes, and it is the same person, yes. <laughs> and then Gurudev uh, walked, uh, he went uh, to the car, they all went uh, to sit, and I was uh, uh, standing uh, near the car and was just looking at him. And, uh, and I saw that all of you were thinking, uh, s uh, talking about together, who is this Mataji and uh, what is she doing? And, um, and then uh, Gurudev went to the hotel and uh, he was supposed to go from there someplace else. And I went with my friend uh, to Los Angeles, to the West Coast. And um, in the morning I was um, preparing myself and uh, to go to the temple. I was a little bit late. And then suddenly I heard a very familiar voice. And, uh, and it was Gurudev singing before class. And then I thought, what? I, uh, because I didn't know the schedule, so I, uh, I had no clue that Gurudev was going to uh, be also there in Los Angeles Temple and that he was going to give class. And the moment I heard that voice, I thought, what? Gurudev is also here. So I quickly uh, you know, dressed up and I ran to the temple and then there was Gurudev. And um, uh, you were there, Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu was there, and Sadika Mataji. But um, I, I was also surprised to see that there was hardly anyone there in the temple. It was completely empty. So we got to uh, sit very close to Gurudev and, uh, you know, have close, uh, he was giving class. And um, that was the, then the second time that uh, I saw Gurudev. And then after that, we came, uh, I came back to Holland. And uh, Gurudev came uh, uh, later to um, um, England, France, uh, Radhadesh. We, uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, go uh, get on tour with Gurudev. And then he, um, uh, he told us that you should come to Bhubaneswar. And, uh, and at that point, we th were thinking that uh, we were not able, we didn't have money to go, but then luckily we could uh, arrange something, and then we went to Bhubaneswar for the first time. And then uh, we could uh, be there for uh, Janamasmi and Radha Asmi, like that. So that is what I wanted to share with you. And, uh, thank you. Okay. Um, 29, I think. <laughs> How old she was? How old she was? Twenty-nine. So, again, does anybody want to comment? Me, no. Sorry? Asurjo said something. Talk to us. No, no the, what I wanted to say is that you asked me that when did you meet Guru Maharaj? And actually, by vision, I've, I've heard or I've seen him before in Belgium here, but that was not meeting Gurudev. You also said some time ago that only by the permission 
of the divinity by the mission by the permission of Gurudev you can s understand something about Gurudev huh? so actually I met Gurudev after some time hearing and see and when he permitted me then I s met him in a, in, in, a, in my own humble limited way yeah. took some time to meet him was not first sight okay I understand he was a very special personality like I met him in Belgium here Padayatra and I asked Maharaj you come to Suriname one time he said you write me and he came to Suriname also often but that was not meeting Gurudev Meeting Gurudev was in Bhuvaneswar after hearing for some time. Then we met Gurudev. To that extent that sometimes we were chanting and remembering him, you know, no one was around, just fall flat on the ground over prayers and I stand up again and chant again. And then again we realized what was happening. Again flat on the ground, just fall as a stick in the direction of his hut and just offer prayers. Then we met Guru Maharaj <laughs> to some extent. Huh? But if he not gives permission, you cannot meet him. I don't know you want to say that. Sometimes the Bhakti Nathaka speaks about two types of devotees. Bahir Bhutan is external devotees. And Antra Mukjana is internal devotees, and the nature of the Bahir Mukjana is uh, Amar Guru, Jagat Guru. They think that my Guru is everybody's Guru. But that's not Guru. Guru doesn't just mean because everybody likes him, just because I have faith in this particular person, therefore everybody else has to have faith. That means you haven't really met that person, because we have a personal connection with him. I know when I, I first met Guru Maharaj in 91 in Alachua, Florida, and it was nice. I was inspired. I appreciated him, but about that much inspiration. But there was one old friend who had taken initiation from Guru Maharaj, was around Guru Maharaj, and he was very enthusiastic to push me that I should go, and I really didn't like that. And a few weeks later, we went to New York, and we found Guru Maharaj was there at the New York Temple, but also that f old friend of mine was there. And so I, I pointedly did not go to any of Guru Maharaj's classes. I stayed away because that, that devotee was so... I found him very obnoxious, just pushing me. And, and he had his realization. And I, I didn't go to any of Guru Maharaj's classes. I'm so unfortunate. I was going out and doing book distribution every day. And then one morning, I was leaving the temple. I was going out to foyer. Uh, front area and Guru Maharaj was standing there with some suitcases all by himself and all of a sudden I, I'm with him just the two of us and I looked at him and he's looking at me and I just felt this really strong desire in my heart I, I should serve him I should help him he's an old man he's a, but then I remembered this crazy friend of mine and there was this really poignant moment I just offered obeisances and I left so I couldn't appreciate Guru Maharaj at that time. And we should understand this point that Guru is a person. And it's not just that we can insist on everybody that you should come to my sadhu, you should appreciate my Guru Dev. That's actually a very, very shallow, very neophyte kind of attitude. So I, I wanted to ask Raghava Pandit Prabhu, you want to say something? Okay, here's the... I'm not a woman. <laughs> well, well, in the spiritual world, you, you, you are. <laughs> probably, most probably coming to this line in the spiritual uh, world. Most probably. Yeah, most probably. Listen, listen, I'm the first one who want to break the rules, but I just want to. Okay. Agyanati Marandasya Gyanandana Sarnakaya Chaksurim Miritam Yanatas Mai Sri Guru Vedama. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Gaur Govinda Goswami Niti Namine Vanchakalpa Darubhyasthya Kripa Sindhu Bevasthya Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Nama Oh, where can I start Gurudev? Um, 
Thank you so much for allowing me to be in such wonderful company today. <coughs> Just remembering your, your glories and your pastimes and your wonderful qualities. And uh, as as life goes by, as the years go by, I just realize more and more in my heart how fortunate all of us have been, how fortunate I have been and still am, although sometimes most of the time I'm forgetting. So I'm especially grateful and appreciative of having this opportunity to remember and to put you first, middle, second, last, everywhere, and never forget your seva and your wonderful mercy that you've given us and me. I was quite young when Guru Maharaj first appeared in my life, in this physical world, so to say. And Mahesh, my, Maitreya Prabhu ha also had a hand in that, you know. Uh, so, Rakta. Was, so. so now his ears must be ringing, because like, he's like, who's talking about me so much? He must have yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> No, but uh, Raktambar and myself, we were in Radhadesh in the, in the Bhakta class, getting training on how to uh, do the most basic things in, in Bhakti. And uh, I think it was uh, the, Rati, or the Padayatra that was going on, and Guru Maharaj was visiting, or I'm not in sure. Belgium. Yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were asked to go, you know, because good thing here from sannyasis, and so I was like, wow. I, ha I had good fortune to have been to Vrindavan and Mayapur already before the Bhakta class. Uh, it is, did a slight different uh, <laughs> path, but um, I I felt in my heart I was ready to accept somebody who can help me further, you know, like in in bhakti, accept a guru. But I was kind of like looking around, and there's all this like uh, wonderful uh, sweet shop to choose from, you know. Like, and I love them all. I I truly did, and still do. But I didn't have that like Im like that that spark, you know, that magic. I don't know what I was looking for. Maybe like colors in the sky or something I mean, that's supposed to happen when you meet your guru like I don't know what do I know and and uh, not exactly maybe perhaps but you know I was looking maybe for some mystical experience right but as soon as I saw Gurudev it was very obvious that this is his guru he's the guru of gurus he's the guru of the universe he's the gu he's his role only is here to serve Krishna and to to help those who are open to it so I I don't know, somehow I just felt that so strongly and, you know, shortly thereafter I went to India and I, s I stayed in Bhuvaneshwar for, for a little while and, and my only credit is that I've only been in his association and even although it was like a mosquito, I am realizing it more and more that, you know, maybe physically I was there and he was asking me and allowing me to do some things. But in my mind, maybe I was not appreciating so much, I was not seeing so much what good fortune had come to me and how to make the, the best of it but you know like I'm just hoping and praying that he's so merciful that every day he'll again give me a second chance and a third chance and a fourth one and a fifth one and like it's about time like right now we, we get a little bit serious and I understand time is ticking but I, I'm sorry that I can't be that you know satsisha true exemplary disciple I'm grateful that he has inspired so many of you to to be such good examples and, and inspire us and, and, and uh, to arrange these programs. I really get a lot of joy, you know, seeing all the activities go on. Listen, you can go away for one year or for five years or ten years and you come back again, everyone's still doing the same thing, Haribo, Haribo, and so happy and I'm like, wow, you know, this, this is really nice to see this. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's something true, there's some true substance to it, you know, it's not just an external show of like, you know, look at us all being spiritual and all that, or doing nice kirtan, all these things. I mean, after a while, if this is not truly coming from our heart, even that will dry up. We'll, 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 we'll uh, you know, we'll have to go deep. Like Guru Maharaj would always say, like, don't just float at the surface of the ocean. Like, you can only collect fish. You have to go deep and collect the invaluable gems, the pearls that are there in our Bhakti Siddhanta and, and uncover those. And I'm not very much of a philosophical student and, and quoting shlokas, although I really appreciate those who do and, and, and who can and who have this amazing memory. Like, I'm just like, you know, I don't know what, what, what I am, but that's, that's not my natural inclination, so to say. And so I, I have tried to use my other passions or or you know inspiration in, in his service and even like you're saying like Gurudev Krishna is 
agreeing to be the ground and also the legs by which we are able to walk at all in this spiritual sphere and I'm just realizing that even now even in, in sort of like in a mundane setting like everything I do to make a living or to just exist or to like everything I learned in the seva of my of my guru Dev. there's nothing that I that I'm doing right now that I didn't learn in those years like those those were were the best years of my life and and my guru is my guru eternally and no matter who came before who came after and I am bowing down with the greatest of respect to all those who are helping and continue to help me but my guru Dev is my guru Dev, and there's only one guru Dev. and for myself I'm just I'm happy but I'm also sad that I cannot be that exemplary disciple but I'm praying and I'm trying and I'm I'm praying again and crying and listening and hearing and you know the the, the thing that is a common theme in all of his pravachans and dealings etc is to be simple and to have no envy in our hearts and to see and become happy truly happy to see other devotees being successful <coughs> or doing nice things or serving in a small insignificant way it doesn't have to be a big pandal around it like look at me doing you know like whoever serving from the heart is noticed and and like like uh, our sister is, is telling uh, you know it is obvious that I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that he would read your mind which was also very very scary because my mind is not something that you want to read, trust me. Sometimes you have to run away, huh? Yeah. Because you know, everything. He used to say, you cannot cheat Guru. Guru knows everything. Yeah, that was the scary part. Like, I was so afraid that he could read all this dark side of my mind, which is 99%. And but there's been so much proof. Even although I'm not looking for proof, I'm not here to test my guru. Like okay, how much? But it, it, the same thing happened. If I may just you know share a little story when I when I had sort of decided in my heart, although I was still looking to make sure that he was my guru. But like in Mayapur, he was giving evening darshans for a week while he was at the GBC meetings. I think it's 91 and. I was going every every day and uh, I was having questions and I was trying to take them down but I was so shy to ask you know I was like just mental I guess he's a complete mess <laughs> I just didn't want to ask but I wanted him to accept me as his disciple and I was making some friendship with my new friends now like Gokul and, and others I think mostly Gokul I, re I remember and so I, on, on the final darshan before it, going back to Bhubaneswar I, I got the courage to to let everyone leave the room and I was just there and I think Gokul was there maybe Chichanya Chandra or Sachinanupu I'm not sure and um, I got the courage to ask him to please accept me as, as, as uh, his disciple but just before that it was the last darshan and I had those three questions and I'm so sorry that I don't remember what those the, what those are but he did address and answer all three questions in his final darshan that he gave in that one week and then at the end of that darshan, he looked me right in the eyes and he says, are all questions answered now? And I was like, Hare Krishna, <laughs> you know. So I don't even have to ask. And he is already answering and, and recognizing me and seeing that, yeah, I had maybe some sincere question and he wanted to answer and he did. And he accepted me and he asked me to come to Bhuvaneshwar and, and to hear because unless you hear and associate, um, how can you develop faith? And without faith, it's all useless. It's the it's the it's the basis of w from which everything will become stronger and will grow. So I'm very I'm very grateful for that. Like more and more, I I, I start my days just expressing, trying to express that that gratitude for for those years, for those moments, for those you know those special moments that you have that you share that you that you cherish. You know, I really appreciate like spending some time on the, on the Skype sometimes and going over. You know, like some some projects or some 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 issue or some some remembrances or some philosophical points. It really gives me so much so much joy because you know I don't really go anywhere. I just sit at home and do my work, and that's called work from home these days. But it's also very isolated. You know, like I don't talk to anybody. Um, so I really appreciate that. And and uh, yeah, like I said, again, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity today. I'm. Um, like I said, the best years in my life, 
and I'll tell everyone I was just trying to explain to somebody how special this day is um, because my guru and I'm going to be very proud of my guru because I am very proud of my guru that he was born smack in the middle of like first Krishna was born then another week and then another week and then Srimati Radharani was born and he was born right in the middle and you know it could be coincidence you know like but I don't think so I want to believe that is to totally Krishna's Gopal Gopal's mercy for bringing our Gurudev into this world and helping us be the ground and our, the legs to to move in this in the spiritual sphere so Gurudev please forgive me for so many unlimited mistakes I don't know there's still new mistakes that I'm coming up with that I didn't know I had in me but I'm still finding new ways I hope that one day Gurudev you can just do that magic and, and make me your your das eternally so thank you again life after life Gurudev thank you very much Hare Krishna Dhanu let's do all Hare Krishna you always one of my heroes Someone may ask why he had so much affection. He was doing service and things, but to me, my heart, I think Guru Maharaj just liked you because you're just so simple and so straightforward. And to be so honest like this, how you're speaking, it's really inspiring for me. I, I, I appreciate your association so much. Um, is Krishna Priya around? She's in the very back. Would you like to say something maybe? <laughs> she will she say something maybe? Okay. Krishna Priya, please come. Yeah, you just just the, you just share you just share with us. Okay, then you don't have to speak, but you can just come and just share one small realization about Guru Maharaj with everybody in a few seconds. First time I saw Gurudev was in Suriname. The first time I met Gurudev was in Suriname, and um, we were we were preparing for his arrival to come to Suriname. And Prabhu, he was always um, you know like talking so much about Gurudev. So I was thinking, why is this? Why is he talking like that? You know, because I didn't know much about. Guru and all this thing. So then he was always telling me, Gurudev is like this, Gurudev is like that, you know, and how great he is. So when Gurudev arrived that day on the Saturday, it was a Saturday around 2.30, Gurudev arrived and Gurudev has to go up the staircase. I saw Prabhu, that I had no relationship or anything with him. So I saw Prabhu start taking his dhoti and cleaning the stairs. It was this dhoti, and he started wiping it so, so that Gurudev had get Gurudev he could go up, walk up. Yeah. <laughs> So he was wiping it just before when look at perverse, it looked a little strange because he was trying to <laughs> clean and save them with his clothes and his So then I was thinking that this has to be a, a, a real sadhu. Why is he doing like that, you know, that, uh, that I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that, you know, what is he really doing? 
So then, um, anyway, um, Janaki Nath Prabhu asked me to cook dalma for Gurudev, and I had never cooked dalma before. I had to cook the first meal. So uh, Janaki Nath Prabhu was telling me, you know, he was guiding me that time, what, how to cook and what to do. So I made the dalma, and I always remember that I, I didn't, I made a mess out of it, really, you know. And I heard when after Gurudev had his lunch, I asked was Rasikananda Prabhu or someone asked, how was it? Did, he, did Maharaj like the dalma? And he said he was laughing when he ate the dalma. Then I would say, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so then that day passed, and um, that day was gone with uh, meeting Gurudev, and I had no connection that day or anything. But when he was leaving around 3, was it 3 in the morning, uh, he was going away to the airport. And I was thinking, I, I hid myself at the back of the stairs because I don't like to be in somehow in the front. So I, and then I saw that Gurudev looked up, and f from the car he looked up and he looked at me, you know, and it was like I never tell to Prabhu because if I only tell him, he would say, yes, Gurudev did it to you, you know, and he would start to inspire me more. So that I didn't say anything, so I want to see if that really works. So then I, um, I just uh, took it easy. Then I was. They all went to the to Guyana was Guyana. They were all went there. And then I was uh, like very quiet. I was. Uh, we had to take care of the temple. So then um, time passes by, and then Gurudev he asked Gurudev. Okay, that was another story. But then Gurudev he wrote Gurudev a letter that we should we will get married or something like that. And I was thinking that um, if he if he's talking so much about Gurudev, and I, I felt something that why Gurudev look at me, but I never expressed this. But then I was thinking that um, that something has gone, you know, something deep has uh, because I want to live the life that he's lived with his guru. I want to be th that same guru, but I was only theoretically saying that without any feelings, really, you know. But then as time passes, and he had uh, wrote some letters to Gurudev, then I realized that really this, this is my guru also, you know, even though it's not, it's, it's, it's different, but I was thinking that this is my guru, this is the guru I want, you know. And then um, what happened is that we were coming to Bhubaneswar, we were going to Bhubaneswar, and then Gurudev left in the Feb February was February month, and uh, I just keep. I always feel that Gurudev is my guru as well because I dreamt him one day. If you want to know, I dreamt one day that I didn't put it a bindi, and we we both went to sit down in front of him, and he told me you should wear your bindi. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, in the dream, always I am wearing the bindi. <laughs> Actually, I feel a little bit embarrassed for myself um, that I'm here as neophyte. I don't want to be like, you know, um, how should I say? I'm not good at these functions, at to, to be in the limelight and talking. And, and no, no, I feel very insecure and sometimes it goes out of the hand. Um, by what do I have to say because I don't feel like to be in the right position as an individual not long ago I had this kind of feeling of realization why do I exist what is my value added actually on this theater and I shared with some of my friends in India and they said no 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 you should be happy that you took life again 
just remember what fucking Mon Maharaj has mentioned about Namaruchi. Um, there's a lot to tell. There's a lot to share. Unfortunately for me, I have never ever met Sila Gorgu in the Swami Maharaj. Never. And I feel very, 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 very bad about that. Although I'm for a while in Iskan and uh, try to serve the Holland Yatra and a little bit Radhadesh with the book distribution, but the Cheru Maharaj, Loknath Maharaj, and most of them Mahavishnu Swami Maharaj, the English one. Yes, for quite a while. I was able to serve him to a huge extent and there was a point where he told me that Brahmananda uh, what is your real name I said Maharaj the name given actually by my father was Brahmananda Mohan Prasad he said I beg your pardon and that was in Iskon Amsterdam temple he said you don't need any diksha you already <laughs> <laughs> you already have the prasad of Mohan. I said, <laughs> I said, we were quite, by the time we became quite close, and later in Radhadesh, Mahavishnu Swami Maharaj told me that um, you're ready for Diksha. You should take Diksha, Brahmananda. I said, all right, fine, okay. But before that, um, I heard about Sila Gorgu in the Swami Maharaj. I heard about him uh, and, and I saw his picture on a book. I think it was The Embankment of Separation. The Embankment? The Embankment of Separation. The embankment, Embankment. But some or another, the picture, it remained in my mind. Okay. Then I went to Suriname. Uh, I told to Mahavishnu Swami Maharaj that uh, I'm leaving, and uh, I will be in I, uh, I will be in Suriname. I don't know for how long, but uh, I'm going. My papers they were not correct. My residence card, etc., etc. He said, "All right, okay." And I joined. Is on Suriname, and it was the first time I heard about Purusottam Tirta Prabhu and Janaki Nadas. He was there, and our famous Anandajit as well, <laughs> as a Brahmachari. Yes, both of them. And uh, I didn't knew about Gorgi and Swami Raj at that time. But when I, the moment I entered the temple, I saw Sisi Goni die. I paid my obeisances, and I saw a small photo of Gargoyne the Swami Maharaj at the corner of the altar. I had something like, okay. And and I knew the Vaishnava etiquette, you know, to do, do, you know to not enter the Pujari's room, you know, and it was Jan Kinat because he was the Pujari and he is a Brahmachari. But then in the corner at the sideways I saw nice photos of Gargoyne the Swami Maharaj. And then I asked him, are you his disciple? And he was a little bit, you know, reserved. But when I came to know, and Anandajit, he is in a lot of things, he's a blabber, I mean at that time, and, and he said, yes, you know, very um, straight, and I was really something like, wow, finally someone who I can talk with. And then I start inquiring and, you know, about the books, about the photos, and then Janikanath Prabhu, he start telling me, uh, and then... He told me also about Purusottam Prabhu and then when Mataji mentioned uh, when Gaurabhidna Swami Maharaj, when he came to Suriname and I heard from some devotees, they told me that Prabhu, we really went berserk, we really went crazy the moment Gaurabhidna Swami Maharaj came on the Sandarai airport in Paramaribo. We were literally like flat down paying obeisances and everything and I was really thirsty for, you know, for more nectar because it was kind of lighting me up again and again and again and again and again, although I never met Maraji. 
And then when that particular Prabhu, his name is Govinda Madhav Sham, he's in Nikari, he's leading, he's one of the Namhat leaders over there. He told me that Prabhu, I should really te tell you that I have not left ISKCON and I will not do that. But that Krishna Bhakti, that little spark what I have, um, is only from the water of Gaurangurina Swami Maharaj, his sannyas clothes, which we had the chance to wash and to drink that water. <laughs> I said, you know, I felt very, you know, it was very emotional when I, when I, when I heard that. Tough. I came back to Holland and then I paid my way. No, I went to India and I had to, Mahavishnu Swami Maharaj called me again. He said, Brahmananda, I'm here. And then said, yes, sure, Maharaj, I will serve you as the way as in Holland. But please, I will have to pay my basis to you because please allow me to go to leave you. Yes, please allow me. So I paid, I said, I hope you will not feel offended. And then I start really, you know, inquiring more about Gauravina Swami Maharaj. I went to his Pushpa Samadhi in Vrindavan on the Parikrama Mark before the Parikrama before the Parikrama mark ends, the Parikrama ends, and then I start getting lots of copies and uh, Krishna Katam read and and hearing and listening more to Gaurangurina Swami Maharaj. You know, really go deep into the Katas. Suddenly the attachment became so close, so close. But I had, didn't have anyone of Gaurangurina Swami Maharaj disciples around me because I was in India. And then I came back from India and. I live my life in Holland and then, but I have never left Gauravina Swami Maharaj. I left Mahavishnu Swami Maharaj, I mean physically, but spiritual technically, yes. And then I was really fine, you know, for a guru, you know, because it was very right and very clear, crystal clear, he's the one who can get me back. Because everything what I prayed, things get solved. Even my anathas, everything, of course. I'm so dirty that not everything goes in one and go. So unlucky I am. But Maharaji has really guided me. And he entered in my dream very clear. And he told me, Brahmanand, you should go. And you go straight to my god brother, my Guru Bhai, Radha Govinda Swami Maharaj. And you take proper diksha from him and then it happened then I said <coughs> yes Guru dear Etic Vaishnava etiquette is maybe then not correct but yes because often I make the mistake you know to also call Gorgon Swami Raj Guru dear yes and then it was very clear but then I went to Radha Govinda Swami Maharaj and I told him about this But Radha Govinda Marathi rejected me. He said, no, I don't want you as a disciple. I will not call the names, but he told me, go to others. They are others. And then I recollected my dream about Gargu and Swami Maharaj. I was so scared and I was so insecure. And then I told to myself, I was right in a corner of my Guru Maharaj room and there were devotees coming and going but then I was really hard-headed and stubborn like you know Radha Govinda Maharaj he can lash me he can kick me he can do this I will accept it like as a Kripa you know but I will not leave this room until I have a yes <laughs> I was really like because Gorgina uh, Swami Maharaj was very clear you go and you take only from him and then Radha Govinda Maharaj, he's, he saw me. I thought he read my mind and he said, come tomorrow to Vashana. And in Vashana, he gave me Diksha. And then I went to Bhuvaneshwar to meet you. And I know that Jankinath Prabhu has told me in the past about the power about many realizations and in my mind everything what comes up I know that Gauravina Swami Maharaj has mentioned about uh, 
mentioning appearances and disappearance days, how important those are to follow them. We devotees, it is good for our sadhana and for our sadhana bhakti, from all great saints and mahatmas to follow the disappearance days and appearance days. So I followed that and it helped. And everything what Maharaji has mentioned and is still mentioning in his kathas, everything is still there and it's all, you know, crystal and crystal clear. A few days back, I was in Radhakund and I saw at the Babaji's Kutir, I saw Gorgo in the Swami Maharaj photos and I had something like, wow. I said, Babaji, Gaurgina Swami Maharaj ji ko jante ho? You know Gaurgina Swami Maharaj? Said, yes. After Srila Prabhupada ji, he is the Acharya. I said, Baba, how you can say that? Yet, of course, it's loud and clear. He is there and the only one. I have served him. When the last GBC meeting was there, he was very tired. He was bored. And then he called, come, I will not mention the name, please forgive me for that. And then he said to that Prabhu, come and take me, take me to my room. I'm really tired of all these meetings. Not long ago, he left this material world. But the appreciation and the prayers of Gaurgur and Swami Maharaj still remains with that Babaji and that respect. So all these things, what I heard, about his disciples, his disciples and even from him, it gives me more Shakti, it gives me more power and it emphasizes again and again and again and again the greatness of this sincere for me Maharaji. Hare Krishna. One comment. Uh, yeah, please. So, uh, from, from your story, I was remembering that uh, 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 when I met uh, Gurudev for the first time, the top lovers mentioned three things are most important <coughs> the dust of the lotus feet, remnants of, uh, of, of the prasadam, and uh, feet washing water. And the Suriname Yatra, they added one fourth thing to drink the water in which the sannyas clothes are washed. I would just like to add one little thing to what Prabhu just said because uh, these three substances are extremely important and when I was uh, at the program in Rotterdam with Sudevi and Kishori Mohan Prabhu, then they were explaining how these things can actually revive your taste. Let's say you have lost your taste for Krishna consciousness, then even one of these three substances mm -hmm. can actually revive your taste in Krishna consciousness if, if you lost it. So they're very, very powerful. Who was going to speak? Yes, I was very small, yes. <laughs> we were the dangerous, we were known as the dangerous children. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for having this wonderful program here. And like you reminded us, the beauty of this is that somehow when we come to these programs and when we're all together, we feel Guru Maharaj is with us. And it's, I don't know how to explain, but it's, it's very bittersweet in a way. It's, it's very addicting. Um, I would... I was thinking about what Madana Lassa Mataji was saying, how she met Maharaj. 
and if I understood properly, you met him first and then Prabhu met. Yes. Yeah. So my parents, it was something similar also. My father was completely set on taking initiation from somebody else. And my mother, I, they were in, f in south of France and there were some disciples and some fanatic disciples. <laughs> you know. And they gave my mother some tapes. They gave my parents some tapes. And my mother, she heard the tapes and she couldn't deal with it. It was too strong. She says he was too... And later on she says he was just cutting through her all her attachments and all her anarchists. So she felt a little, this is too strong. <laughs> but later that summer he came to France and he came to south of France. There was a small center there, La Sat. And he met... Um, 94. Yeah, yes, on pictures, yes. And my mother, when she saw him, she could see he was actually so sweet. And she went back to listening to his tapes, the original tapes that had made her feel it was too strong. And then when she was listening to those tapes again, then she could, she says that it was actually his, such a sense of urgency, that's why he was so heavy. Yes. Like, just trying to m make us understand, you know, why are you wasting your time? <laughs> you know, we need this life, now! <laughs> you know, and, and then she could really appreciate. And then it was a whole thing to try and convince my father <laughs> that we should go to Bhuvaneshwar. But um, um, then we, that in 94, we went to Bhuvaneshwar. Nila was born. And then we went, we went to Spain and then we went to um, Bhuvaneshwar. And we kept going there every year after that. Um, Marriage passed away in 96. It was very, very short, but for my mother, and for it was clear, you know, that she just had to stay there. And anyway, then we had the association of Akhyaman Prabhu, which is also directly through Gorgavinda Maharaj. And, um, and I look back on, on my childhood and I say, wow, well, <laughs> there's nobody, nobody in the world <laughs> has had a childhood like we had, and this is all really the causeless mercy of, of Gorgovina Maharaj Prabhupada and my parents also. So I am really, really grateful and today I, I want to pray a little bit in the mood of Purushottam Tirta Prabhu, please, um, all these thieves <laughs> who are trying to take away this wealth, please uh, um, stay away. <laughs> 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 Please pray for me that I'm that we're able to just ward off this nasty thieves who are tempting you in so many ways and never relentlessly after you all the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I pray to Marge, please um, never let us forget for one moment uh, how fortunate we are to to have been able to to have his association. Just like a mosquito. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. My thank you. Thank you. I've got a Kali Yuga memory, so I can't remember much, so I had to put everything on the phone. Empty battery? <laughs> Empty battery, yes. Dear Srila Gurudev, please accept my most humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet on this most auspicious occasion of your divine appearance. Ex express my unlimited gratitude 
for somehow accepting me and giving me shelter under your care. I sometimes ponder how this could have been at all possible, as personally I have no deserving qualities. So this must have been due to either many lifetimes of Sukriti or simply your merciful glance that afforded me this great fortune. Your kindness, care and love for your disciples and Srila Prabhupada's family of devotees are a major hope for optimism that will, for some in the near future and others, some near lifetime, grant pure Guru Bhakti the only means of achieving pure love of Godhead. A lot has happened in the last 12 months and when I reflect at the catalogue of events that have taken place, I feel a hint of sweeping guidance an arrangement by a divine grace. Of course, personally, I'm unworthy of any direct instruction or responsibility, but your appreciation of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Choti, together with the involvement of my dear God brothers and friends, Purushottam Prabhu, Anupam Prabhu, and moral support from Madhavananda Prabhu, and your sweet friendship with His Holiness Fakir Mohan Maharaj, impresses upon us that somehow or other this seva, this seva has a hint of your sweeping guidance. So on behalf of your divine grace, us three have somehow been given a responsibility in this endeavour to establish a home for Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Sri Sri Radha Madhav. We pray that you bless us and give us strength as we face many legal challenges so that this attempt can be successful. I know this would be immensely pleasing to you and it would glorify your beloved Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and moreover be puri purifying for us. Your dear friend, His Holiness Fakir Mohan Maharaj, had incredible affection for your divine grace. And as a mark of respect, I would like to express some of his sentiments of glorifications for your divine grace. Over the several years of having the good fortune of spending the month of Karthik in his association, he would remember you constantly and frequently choke up with tears in his eyes in separation, saying, My Mitra has left me. And this Karthik, just before he left this planet, he told me, your Gurudev is the manifestation of pure bhakti, and often reminded me of being fortunate to have been accepted by such a Sadguru. I would like to take this opportunity to glorify some of your unlimited wonderful qualities and attributes. Forgive me for being repetitive, but remembering your glories over and over again and meditating on them, Smaranam, is extremely healing, purifying and resurgent for my stone-like heart and murky consciousness. One day I started making a list in appreciation of all your amazing qualities and I could have gone on and on and sincerely write pages and pages. So the ones I'm expressing are done so randomly just to limit the length of this humble offering. <coughs> I'll start with love of your Gurudev. Your un unalloyed love and surrender towards Srila Prabhupada is an example for everyone aspiring to desire to serve as a sad sisya. His instructions to you were your life and soul and he applied them to perfection. You often mentioned that you always felt his presence and with great humility and love you often quoted that he would slap you and pull your ear even though no longer having a physical presence to the rest of us. Fearlessness. Fearless. On the Vyasasan when reciting Krishna Katha you roared like a lion, rarely, rarely witnessed before, which was manifested so naturally and spontaneously as if almost in a trance, burning and cleansing our consciousness, causing us to reflect deep inside, and in my case, helped me understand my delusion, pride, ego, ignorance, and bewilderment. These were often interlaced with sharp but merciful chastisements, no matter whatever the position or status of the person concerned whether he was a GBC, temple president, or simply a new bhakta, all were offered the same merciful treatment. You are truly a well-wishing friend of everyone. On a humorous note, I often had devotee friends saying to me, I'm going to sit right at the back, not in the front of Gogavind Maharaj, in case he asks me any questions or he chastises me. Humility. Of the Vyasa-san, you manifested complete humility, always so respectful, caring, and grave. Love of Godhead, Prema. This is not a sentiment, but a practical and spontaneous quality 
that your divine grace manifested as entering power in Sri Dham Mayapur, confirmed by none other than Akinchan Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj. Your ecstatic kirtans, classes and infectious laughter and so often your eyes moistened with the tears of love and compassion while reciting prayers and verses. Greatest of scholars, your classes can only be likened to a most eminent professor of love of Godhead with the trail of composition and organization of the contents expressed. All this laced with evidences and referrals to Vedic scriptures and the teachings of predecessor acharyas in a word simple, breathtaking to behold. All glories, all glories to your magnificent and munif munificent personality. I pray that you forgive my constant stubbornness and attachment to obstacles in my endeavor to please your divine grace and bless me with the strength to overcome them. I pray that I may always have the love, kindness and affection of my most dear God brothers and God sisters who in my estimation are an expansion of your mercy so that they can encourage me and improve me in a way that would please your divine grace. Gora Priya Jana Patita Pavan Shila Guru Dev Ki Jaya. very young when Gurudev left his body but um, Gurudev helped me in my own spiritual life with finding my own spiritual master because my mother every day puts a lecture on of Gurudev on and Gurudev has a way of speaking in his lectures well he'll drive the point home whether you're listening whether you're not listening by the end of the lecture you'll know what he was saying <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is one, one point that Gurudev always mentions and drives home is you have to find a sad guru something he always mentions. So it awakened within me a, a desire really to, to look for a spiritual master because Gurudev says it's very important to look for your spiritual master. So that's how Gurudev helped me in my spiritual life. Even if I never met him or remember meeting him, this is what Gurudev gave me. Give me my spiritual master. my passport and then check if it is true. <laughs> no, that's why. <laughs> I don't have it in my phone, but uh, it's a traditional way. Um, so when, when uh, last couple of weeks I was uh, reading uh, through the uh, everything which is available on, 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 on the exchanges between Srila Prabhupada when he was in Bhubaneswar. Bhubaneswar in 1997, 1977, in the end of January, beginning of February. So there are some lectures, some morning walks, some uh, darshans, and, and I, was, I was looking for the exchanges between our Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> and trying to, you know, try to get some inspiration for, for, for we just put that today. And also to, uh, to try to understand the relationship between uh, Ashisha and Guru. Uh, so that like, like when the Pope or the King arrives mm -hmm. at a certain place, he brings his entourage, entourage with him. So Srila Prabhupada came with his, his uh, secretary, his san sannyasis, a cook, and uh, so many people. Yes, yes. So Hariswari was serving at that time, and uh, Satsurup uh, was there. Uh, Sarup Damodar Maharaj was there. So so many people were there. <coughs> I think so. Yeah, I didn't write down all the names of all the people who were there because I was focused on Gurudev. So what I found is that that in all the lectures and 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 all the encounters. Gurudev's name is hardly mentioned. He was in Bhubaneswar, it was his place, and, and uh, he was present at like every lecture and every darshan because he was translating. 
uh, lo most people have uh, Oriyas. So in Oriya language, they would ask uh, uh, questions, and Srila uh, Gurudev had to translate. Uh, or even when, when uh, Prabhupada would speak in, uh, in English, he would translate in Oriya language. So, so sometimes you can see that it is mentioned Gorguint, translating. So because of that hint, you can understand, as we as disciples, he was there constantly, of course, because he was arranging everything, busy day and night to serve his spiritual master, uh, visiting uh, the project which, is, which was uh, you know, given and trusted to him to develop the last, uh, last project, ISKCON project, during Srila Prabhupada's lifetime. And um, <coughs> they had many discussions on many topics because the sannyasis they had the, they were preaching in so many places in uh, Japan, Bangladesh. There were some organizational things going on in, in Mumbai, in London. So they were discussing all these all these topics of of, of uh, how to do preaching in the Muslim country, in, J in Japanese society, and other societies. So, and one of the things I have chosen to read from, from here is that at one point, on the 28th of January, uh, they were discussing in a small group uh, of, 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 uh, of, of persons. There were just a few disciples, and later on some Oriya people came there. But just before the Oriya people came there, they talked about Guru Tattva, on what is the qualification of a Guru and, and those things. So, Srila Prabhupada, out of the blue, said the following, which I'm now going to read. Prabhupada says, Now, I will say from my practical life, it is not pride. Actually, everyone knows that my Guru Maharaj had thousands of disciples. So out of thousands of disciples, practically, I am little successful. That everyone knows. Why? Because I firmly believed in the words of my Guru. That's all. This is the, there may be many other God brothers, may be very learned and very advanced, whatever it may be, favored, and everyone claims that I'm the most favorite. And practical point of view, Sosila Prabhupada says, so I think sometimes that why this wonderful thing has happened to me. So Prabhupada is thinking like that. So he, he says here, so I search out. I search out only that I, Cent per cent belief on the words of my spiritual master. That's all, nothing else. Guru Mukha Patma Vakya Sitete Korea Aikya Ana Koreo Mane Hasa. Don't think of any nonsense. Simply execute what your Guru has said. That is success. So I found this, and um, the thing is that you were asking for, for you know, <coughs> how did you meet Guru Dev? So, uh, my first realization <coughs> with the Guru Dev in '94, little after Manulasa uh, met the Guru Dev, because I heard all these amazing stories of hey, can read your minds and uh, you know uh, all these things. I thought, okay, I will think of something, and when he can read of that, <laughs> I will know that uh, you know uh, he has uh, he has uh, he, he knows <laughs> what my question is. He will pass it well. You know, you have to challenge the Guru as well. So. Uh, I had this question in my mind, and at that time I was I was uh, uh, I was I was working in my first job with a contract, and uh, my guru Dev's answer to the question was, "Give up all your pri plans and projects, and surrender unto Krishna." And he looked at me. So you know, okay, I had that question that I was challenging him. This was his answer. <laughs> And as the mother Sa mentioned, uh, we were doing the tour in in '94 in, uh, in 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 England, and then France, and then at the end of the tour, we asked him, uh, you know, to be initiated, and then Guru Dev told us, "Come to Bhubaneswar." So I was at the end of my contract. I had to find the other job, and uh, I said, "We will try to figure out something." So my contract ended. We went to Bhubaneswar, and uh, that was the success of our lives. Uh, but the question I had is that it's connected with this thing here. Srila Prabhupada said, uh, you have to 100% believe on the words of your spiritual master. 
and uh, and to be able to do that means to surrender. So in the past of pi of, of spiritual advancement, it all starts with uh, Adar Sarada. And that is one of my things is that without a proper Adar <coughs> Sarada, it all stands and falls with, with how deeply you are able and willing to surrender. And I must say that I have nothing like even 1% of surrender or whatever like that. And that is the biggest hindrance in the past of, uh, of, of spiritual process. And this, this, this uh, uh, quotation from Srila Prabhupada demonstrates that whenever a disciple like Srila Prabhupada said, if you just have to believe the words of your spiritual master, you can do amazing things. So uh, just in remembrance of today's uh, Vyas Puja, I hope that uh, one day the day may come, I have, you know, instead of 1%, 2% or something. <laughs> That is very <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> yes. Jai Shila Gurudev, Hare Krishna. I don't know in which year it was, but he visited the temple in Antwerp, 94. And that was the time when he also did this tour in Turnhout and everywhere, eh? Yes. Oh, that was before? But that was close to that time, I think. And that was also the time when he did that tour. I remember that uh, Mahesh Pandit, or Maitreya Rishi at that time, that he was so inspired. He was like, he was like uh, ecstatic, like, I met my spiritual master. And it had just been so shortly, but he was so convinced. And that's, but I was also listening, but I was mainly busy in the background during that tour, uh, mainly busy in the background. And uh, I heard him say, oh, you this, that. And I thought he speaks so heavy. <laughs> he speaks. Like, huh, huh, isn't it? And, and, but really <laughs> heavy. And I thought, oh, this is not my spiritual master because he's so, so heavy. But, but I liked him. But this, and there was also one devotee I remember with some problem. And then he addressed that devotee in the lecture really straight and really heavy. He had that straightforwardness. Eh? And that was very good for, for uh, people also and for the devotees. But it kept me a little bit <laughs> in the back, and uh, I don't know. I met him also one time in India, and then he was in his room with other devotees together, and then I saw a whole other Gorkovinda Maharaj, and he was sitting very peacefully on the bed, and the devotees were sitting around him, and they were asking questions, and he was responding, but really so lovingly as a father, very, very uh, nice. I remember, I cherish that also in my heart. And one time I met him in Radhadesh, uh, last time. Then we had a kind of encounter because he had given a lecture and after the lecture I thought I have to ask him this. <coughs> because I have been always from day one, because I joined at a very old age of 30 years. <laughs> and everybody was Everybody was like 18 and 20 and 22 and they were all my gurus and instructors and I was already old. And, um, but I had, and I was into interfaith from my Catholic background which was quite strong from my parents. And, but I accepted Krishna consciousness. I got the Gita when I was 20, became vegetarian. But it took me 10 years before I got over this uh, sect uh, that I didn't want to belong to idea. So then after that lecture in Radhadesh, I went to him and I said, I like Krishna consciousness. I'm practicing now, I don't know, 25 years, but I'm also busy with interfaith. And uh, we have some interfaith groups and I always feel that, that I want to make the bridge because, yeah, it's like inherent in my system from day one. But then he gave me the answer 
And after that, there was no more like time to talk or so. But he said, "Then you can never go deep." Mm. That I will not forget. That that keeps with me, although I'm busy how I live. But uh, that was his answer. Sorry. Thing, yes, you cannot go deep. You can never go deep because it's like one. Yeah, yeah. If you have. If you have, uh, uh, yeah, I said, I also I think I have respect for Jesus Christ. He actually brought me to Krishna consciousness. And uh, he said, yes, but you, he didn't say you have to choose, but he said, yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. But then you can never go deep. So I just want to give this as a thing that happened to me. Yes. So, yeah. Some somehow by his spiritual by by um, because I'm close connected to my husband who was actually he's not a Prabhupada disciple but he joined in 1977 and in April so half a year because Prabhupada passed away in November so half a year he had this feeling of Shila Prabhupada is there and he was always uh, like a Prabhupada Nuga. And I was more like a Bhagavan Nuga from those times after, but he always kept that. So, uh, so he has always been following so sincerely. So he has always been my uh, guru, and and I keep uh, going on in Krishna consciousness. But this interfaith has always remained an integral part. But so I feel like I'm I'm doing both because I'm fully surrendering to the process and staying. More seva than actually is healthy for me at this age of 67. But uh, yeah, this interfaith, I, I love to continue to build bridges to bring people to the inter, to Krishna consciousness actually, to help them understand Krishna consciousness. My understanding is you can do it. Mama said you cannot go so deep in those discussions. But it doesn't mean that if you're doing as a server for no. yeah. ISKCON interfaith, it doesn't mean that you personally, privately, cannot go very deep at the same time. Yes, yes. So that, that interfaith should not be just your life and soul. That you are interfaith, you're doing the service, but you should go deep for yourself. That I understand from yeah. the little sentence that you said. There is danger there. Because being conditioned souls, we are more prone to sentiment than to We are more inclined not to offend anybody, and we should not, of course, but also to make compromise or to allow them their freedom and, and, and in that path make compromise on our own things. So that is what Gurudev meant actually when he said that you cannot go deep. You see, it is a very thin path and you have to be like a sharp shooter, you know. You have to aim at the, you have to first establish the goal very perfectly and then you have to aim for that goal very minutely and very perfectly and anything that can distract you from that and I see it we see it almost everything and what, this was one of the main stay in, uh, sentences of our Guru Maharaj because he had many every single day if you have heard from him for some time or a prolonged time every single day the sentences enter into your mind and one of the sentences, this path is not about sentiment, it's about Siddhanta. And that's why he was so much emphasizing all the Siddhantas and that we should know them. Huh? That you cannot establish Siddhanta on popular food or any sentimental ideas. You know, Jiva Tattva, or Guru Tattva especially. If you see the Gaudiya Kanta Harusila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the first Tattva that we need to understand is Guru Tattva in proper. So when we have these exchanges, actually we should follow Jesus in many ways. Because Jesus was actually a Hare Krishna. Jesus was a Hare Krishna. His Christ come from Christus come from Krishna. So 
And actually, if you see the basis of his knowledge and his upbringing and where he started, did his study, he was, he traveled through India and he was a devotee of Krishna and a devotee of Jagannath. So this is documented, black and white. And the Acharyas have also commented on this. One Acharya, which, which is very famous, he actually explained further. He said, actually, after Jesus' this birth, he actually perfected his bhakti and he became a gopi, actually. So uh, Jesus, after his birth as Jesus, he took another birth and there he perfected his bhakti and he became a gopi. He was allowed into the So actually Jesus was a Hare Krishna. Yes. So, but it is, uh, the thing is actually is we should be very careful not to make compromise. And how to do that it is very important. It is that we have always stay, always stay in Sadhu Sangha. But then we have to also very minutely define what is the mean of sadhu. And sadhu is one who knows the sadhya, the goal, and who has gone through the sadhan to reach that sadhya. That's actually sadhu. When any sannyasis come, we hear people sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastra koi, lava matra, sadhu sangha, sarva siddhi ho. We, many many times we hear people quoting this first. But actually if you go what he says, we have to go deep into the meanings of these words and of these shlokas. Actually, first we have to know what is Sarva Siddhi. In this line, we are not interested in the Siddhis of the material realm. Lagima, Mahima, we are not interested in these things to become materially powerful. Sarva Siddhi here means, Sarva Siddhi here means Prem. Sarva Siddhi, the, the perfection of everything. All perfection is actually Krishna Prem. And by, we can get that Sarva Siddhi by Lava Matra, very minute association, a, very, a, a, a part of a second association with such a sadhu, we can get it. So that means that this verse is meant only for those two sadhus who are Uttam Mahabhagavat. Because they have actually this. If you don't have that perfection, how can you give it? How can we get by associating something if that person doesn't have it? So sadhu actually means Uttam Mahabhagavat Vaishnav. And I can re recollect that it is so important that we, like these girls also say, and what I've heard, I've heard many, many nice things. And I'm so appreciative that our dear God brother Purushtam Prabhu has organized this day because I, my heart dances always when I see my God brothers because they immediately remind us of our Guru Maharaj. They immediately remind me. When I see my God brothers, I see Sila Gagar much first. And then I see my godbrothers and god sisters. So, and if somebody reminds you of your guru, you know, who, which is our first encounter with God, actually, because guru is non-different from God in our line, in Guru Tattva. Krishna says also eh, that, uh, that we should not think that the Acharya is different from me. Acharya maam vijani am nama vanyita karhichit nam martya buddha suyata sarva deva mayo guru. He is the guru of all Devi Devatas. And we see, should not see him different from that. It is a very thing because, because of these statements, people think that we are a sect. Because we make Guru as God himself. But we don't do that. This is actually a, a thing Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. For those who I am pleased, I who are residing in the heart of the Chaitya Guru, I externally appear as the Guru, the Sad Guru. So these points we have to understand and what is meaning of Sadhu Sangha. But when the devotees allow me to speak something, I will a little bit transgress more on these points. Because but there were many, many points, many wonderful points, and uh, very nice. And like, like Didi, to Tarunya, uh, Tarunya Amrita, Didi, how uh, she was speaking, I can, something came to my mind. We were in Antwerp Temple on the America Lai. And Many people say Osila Gaugenmars was so heavy, so heavy, but I don't remember him as heavy. I remember him as a very loving father. I, I never. People were scared of being close to him, but we were fighting to sit in front of him. There were two Prabhupada disciples. Srauti um, Maharaj, what's his name again? Srauti Maharaj, his Karmine. Uh, there were two that were now sannyasis, they were proper disciples and we were all, and, and I didn't know not anything about Ram etiquette. Vijay. Ram Vijay and the French one, his, uh, huh? 
Yeah, a French one. He's now Sanyasi also. So should I do it song? What was his name then? No, no, no. Anyway, they were proper disciples, but we were always fighting to sit in front. And we were also sitting in front when uh, when we had, had class in Antwerp. And Gurudev has, was such a loving and affectionate person, and he would always look at, during his class, to some devotees or whatever, and he would explain. He would speak to everybody, but he would look at one person or two persons for his uh, concentration or whatever he did. So Tarun Didi, Tarun Yamrita Didi, and um, her husband, they came to me and they said, Prabhu, could you please move back to, to the back of the class? Because Maharaj is speaking only to you, and we also want his <laughs> glance. So I said, yes, because they're my seniors. So I said, yes, of course. So I moved back to the class. And then uh, when the class started, Madhavananda Prabhu was sitting there because he was the person, and Gurudev was sitting. Then he started this class. And I, I saw he was looking. And I, I was not in class. Then he saw me in the back. And then the whole class, he was speaking to me in the back of the class. <laughs> <laughs> So he was a very loving father. I, I, I can never, ever, whatever happens, forget or appreciate enough what he has done for me personally and all of us, of course, because without, of, without him, I would have not understand anything in this bhakti line. Anything. And it is very important as, a, as an aspiring son, because I'm not a son, because a real son, he does two things. A real disciple. He used to explain what is the meaning of a disciple. Disciple means discipline. And what is the discipline? That means whatever the instruction the Guru gives. This is also the meaning of Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha is not to associate and hear Harikata and, and, and serve him. Just. What it means actually Sadhu Sangha is what the Acharyas are giving. It should enter the ear and come to the heart and it should be the way we live our life every single breath every single step, every second, every part of a second. This is the real meaning of Sadhu Sangha. So we all know, who are trying to become devotees for many years, like myself, it is very difficult to do this. But it will take many lifetimes. Sila Gurudev used to tell me, Prabhupada has been training me up for many lifetimes. <laughs> he said to me one time. So it will take, but still, we should try to the best of our abilities to more and more follow and live the instructions of our Guru. This means disciple. It is explained that it is more difficult to find a Sat Sishya than a Sat Guru. Why? Eh? It is more simple. No, it is more simple to find a Sat Guru than to find a Sat Sishya. It is more, it is more difficult to find a Sat Guru uh, to a Sat Sishya than a Sat Guru. Yes. Why? Because this world cannot exist. This world cannot exist without a pure Vaishnav. There is always a pure Vaishnav in the universe somewhere because Krishna sends him. This, if there is no pure Vaishnav in existence in this material world, it cannot simply exist. So that is a sh that's a sure thing. So the Sadhguru is always there. But in this whirlpool, on this pool, or this ocean of conditioned souls, it is not sure that this Sadguru will find uh, a Jiva who will become a Satsisya because they're co we're conditioned. So it is not sure that Satsisya may be there, but it is sure that Sadguru will be there. That's why it is more difficult to find a Satsisya than it is to find a Sadguru. But still, it's not easy. It is not easy. And also, we have to understand our Guru Maharaj, what he, they give, he gave us. And he opened my eyes in many, many ways, and always actually. That is what is the meaning of Ajnana Timirandasya, Ajnana Ajnana Shalakya Chakyur. The Guru, by, the, by his mercy, he opens up our eyes yeah, with, a, with the torch light of knowledge, with Siddhanta. And I want to quote, because it is, it is not... We, we have to also quote Shastra. This is one thing of his saying. A Vaishnav, if you want to become a Vaishnav, if you want to become a devotee, if you want to establish anything, you have to quote Shastra. Because it is three things that always should be in one line for it to become Siddhanta. Sadhu, Guru, and Shastra. Sometimes Sadhu may say something. Sometimes Guru may say something. And sometimes Shastra. But it is always, if these three are in line, then only it will be accepted as pure Siddhanta. 
So there was one discussion from a Guru Maharaj with a devotee, and his name is not mentioned. And somebody sent it to me today, and I find it very nice. And they said, the devotee says, Srila Prabhupada always emphasized that he was eternally present in his books, instructions, tapes, and letters. So when you say we should take association of a sadhu, can we do that through Srila Prabhupada's books? Very important question. Gaugamina Swami, Srila Gaugamina Swami. If Prabhupada say, says he is there, then you try to see him, associate with him, and listen from him. Do you see Prabhupada? Is he speaking to you? Devotee says then, through his books. Gaugamina Swami, through his books, yes. All sadhus speak through their books. Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and Srila Prabhupada all say that they speak through their books. This is not a new thing. This is our Vaishnav procedure. But you should see him. Can you see Bhakti Vinod Thakur? Can you see Jiva Goswami? You may say, oh, I have read their books. I have their association. That won't help. You cannot understand what they have said merely by reading their books. Your, con your consciousness is very low, so you cannot understand their words. They are very, very merciful, but you should follow the proper path. If you are intelligent, you will understand how they are still here, not only in the form of their books, but also they are here. You should see them. Why you think so why are you thinking so foolishly? So many books were already there. So why has Sila Prabhupada said this? You are thinking. We need only to read books. There is no need of association with a sadhu who is physically present. Is there any sadhu? No, there is no sadhu at all. Your motto is, seeing is believing. You cannot see. So you cannot believe because you are conditioned soul. Your vision is defective. You cannot see a sadhu. Krishna is there. Can you see him? No, you cannot. Because you are not endowed with proper vision. First develop the proper vision, then you can see Krishna. Then you can see how a sadhu is there. It is not a fact that sadhus are not present. How is everything going on? How does the sun rise, the wind blow, and Indra give rain? All these things are going on. No sadhu, no Krishna, it is nonsense, foolishness. We are so we are identifying ourselves as the body, mind and false ego. We think we are very great, so we say, oh, there is no sadhu. We are in the category of identification with the body and mind. We have not come to the beginning of the stage of purity, no. The Fauri then asks, so we have to associate with the living sadhu, Sila Gauguna Maharaj? Definitely. There is always one there. But he is not a cheap person. Such a person is very rare. If you can get his mercy, then you can see him. Otherwise, by your own effort and perce perception, you cannot see him. No, no, no. You always think that you are Drista, the seer, and that the sadhu is Drista, the one to be seen. You are Drasta, and the sadhu is Drista. Eh? You always think that you are Drasta. You, this here? Yeah? This is what is said here. And that the sadhu is Drista, the one to be seen. Everyone is like this. They think there are seers, but it is just the reverse. You are to be seen, and they are the seer. Think this over very deeply. I think you cannot completely understand what I say. We always think that we are the seer and they are to be seen. But this is not a fact. It is just the reverse. They are the seers and we are to be seen. The devotee then asks, how are we seen by the sadhu by our, by our surface? Sila Gauguramats, yes. The sadhu is a seer. If he showers his mercy upon you, he sees you. If you receive the merciful glance, then you are very fortunate. However, you are in the category of bodily consciousness. How can you have it? Guru is the manifestation of the super soul, the Chaitya Guru in the heart. In the heart. He manifests a body and appears. He knows your heart. Sir, Jai.
Hare Krishna. Yeah. So, so I think the devotees want to take prasadam. I just have a real quick announcement. Um, if anybody would like to help with the project, this magazine is about to be printed okay. in Ukraine. If anybody would like to help a small project with your mind, we're going to print this magazine in Russian for the first time. Last part, eh? Just another week or two, and we're trying to get donations to help print this. And also this one right here. Somebody's interested in this. Should we explore it?